Apple TV too much. They have tiny hard drives. You have to stream most of the stuff you want from iTunes. It's kind of a pain to upgrade the internal drive, but... It doesn't have to be that way. No? No, actually, no? this is this is the my the geek house, my how my personal Apple TV. You ripped it out of the, the domicile and brought it in, eh? I gotta say, the, the next mod on this is gonna be taking it to the drill press and cutting holes out of the top to ventilate it. You could keep your coffee warm on it. You can make popcorn Ooh. on hey, the top of this thing. Foot warmer. Yeah. Keep it, it down by your feet. Just along with, yeah, actually, that if I can get my feet. <laughs> in, in any case, I, look, there are tons of Apple TV hacks that don't involve using a drill press. AwkwardTV.org, AppleTVHacks.net, really good websites. But with a two-year-old, an Airstream project, and a lot of, lot of laundry threatening to go sentient if I leave it alone for too long, I took the easy way out. $50 for ATV Flash. You need that download and a USB thumb drive. There's OS X and Windows versions. Basically, you download one or the other, whichever operating system you prefer. It works with Apple TV's operating system 3.02. And basically, it blocks the upgrade to the new Apple TV operating system until they've modified their cool modification firmware. Nice. You pay your money, you get an instant download of the executable file, you right click, you format your thumb drive with FAT32, you open up the, A the Apple TV, the ATVs. Uh, flash installer, right? If you can double click, you can do this. And you let it download the Apple TV update file from the internet. So if you don't happen to have it hanging around somewhere in your machine, you watch your anti spyware panic, it starts to write to the drive, you ignore the program accessibility warning or whatever it is that Windows 7 generates. And then make sure your Apple TV has the latest update. Pull the power plug, because there's no off switch. Insert the USB drive, power on the Apple TV, watch for the Apple TV, for the ATV flash logo. Power it off again when prompted, remove the flash drive, and wait for the normal Apple TV menu to appear. And then you get something that looks like this. Software at last. Yes. Well, so you've got like the basic Apple TV menu, right? I've got my movies, my TV shows, my music, which is all being recopied because I broke my, my we, we changed oh. networks. Now everything's resyncing. I don't want to talk about it. It's kind of emotionally traumatic. Oh, look, Iggy Pop's back. Get a live album, new legacy edition. The yeah. excellent. So get over to media and browser. Hey, there's a browser in here now, and Nitto TV, XBMC, XBMC and Boxy are nice. installed. It's pretty slick, actually. The, the best part is though is uh, you go to maintenance and manage plugins, so you can install extras. So I've already got uh, Perian comes installed Scratch. I dropped it in Flip for Mac WMV. So I've got uh, Windows Media File Supported Adobe Flash installed. Um, I like that. Yeah, the Vine server, you can actually install Firefox, Tunnelblick if you want to do a VPN connection. Can't imagine what people would use that for. And you can manage your plugins. Is there any reason you'd go back to the original firmware on the Apple TV product? Oh, the, the original firmware is kind of in there, right? Okay. Um, what was the thing that's actually really funny is your, remember your hoop controller? Oh, yes. They actually have the ability to use <laughs> the hoop controller on this one. I have to bring that in. The loop, baby. The loop. So uh, Couchsurfer Pro. Nitto TV is really cool. This is what actually, this is kind of the whole reason I did this, because they didn't want to deal with upgrading another hard drive and having it die from the heat inside of this. Um, you basically, you go in there, you run the installer for Nitto TV, reboot the box, and you can use external USB storage. So I got a little oh. two and a half inch drive down, I'm gonna transfer Slick. everything over to a two terabyte external hard drive. Um, you, you need to run the smart installer to enable USB storage, DVD playback, network streaming. Um, do yourself a favor, when you go into, if you wanna run XPMC and Boxy, go to downloads first, and make sure you basically run each one of these to download the latest version of XPMC and Boxy before running them, and it's pretty cool. The external drive, amazing, simple. I now have fat amounts of space. I don't have to worry about that stupid two and a half inch flash or stupid flash drive, <laughs> hard drive inside if you're heating things up. There's, you still basically run the Apple TV off the internal drive, but all of your files are stored on your external drive. I love it. Codex, the browser is not so useful, but I also haven't played around too much with the modifications to use a keyboard with this that I understand are buried in here somewhere. But as far as the applications that are built in and that uh, you can install <laughs> and the codex you mentioned, those are all auto updated? Yes. That's sweet. I that, believe that, so. That, that makes it life a lot easier, I think, for using products like these, especially if you're going to soft mod your Apple TV. I'm still or, in the first few weeks of, of joyful. <laughs> At this point, I'm just so excited not to have to stream everything over the network. The honeymoon yet. phase. Yeah, and also I really do need to figure out the whole keyboard add-on for this. So I'll try to get back in that in the next couple weeks. But yeah, 50 bucks. If you don't want to deal with hacking your way through all the hacks, yeah. uh, 
this is definitely worth purchasing. We got links in the show notes. You can see the URL right down there. <laughs>